The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 906 Concerning Shady Art Collectors A large party of ponies and a griffin trotted after President Kanmari, the suited stallion leading them on a walking tour of the western shore of the island. It was the most developed section they had seen, part of the school instead of college town to the south, and designed to be the first thing many ships and visitors saw upon sailing in from the mainland. A rather pretty establishment you have here, Felicity commented as they made their way down a sculpted road, the sun beginning to set to the west. Passing students waved, most of them noticing the president and not opting to try to stop them to chat. Gerardo tapped her on the shoulder. Mind you don't repeat the same praise too often, he whispered. You've said that three times already. We wouldn't want to sound insincere. What? More poetic words elude me. President Kenmari laughed. That's quite all right. In comparison to the wonders you must have seen, I'd know you were bluffing if you said my tiny island was the best. Generations of ponies have done their best to make this a proud institution, but the North is home to nations older than Equestria. I'm sure they have us outdone. Not outdone in hospitality, at least, Amber insisted, looking much better after her bath. Her eyes were still weary, but they were free, and her mane had a bit of a bounce to it that wasn't just from the shampoo. I joined the party late, but some of the stories I've heard, let me tell you. The president chuckled, passing a building Starlight suspected was the opposite side of the laughter dorms than the one they had stayed in. In the distance up ahead, she could see a plaza with a fountain, but suspected it was different than the one near the coffee shop where she had talked with Caballeron. Eventually, they reached a fountain, a sculpture of a unicorn, pegasus, and earth pony standing back to back on their hind legs, each holding an open book with water running out from between the pages. President Kanmari gestured to a gate to the side. This here we like to call the school's front entrance, he narrated. It's the dock where new students arrive for the first time, and where we hold class inaugurations and the like. It's also a great place to watch the sunset reflecting off the waves, so remember where it is. He turned away from the gate to the docks facing inland, and here we have most of the administration buildings, including school-owned on-campus housing for some of our more distinguished staff. Jamjars instantly snapped out of her thoughts. Is that where we'll be staying? You're an eager one, aren't you? President Kanmari laughed. It's an option, but not your only one. Whatever you choose, though, the cost will be all on us, so don't fret yourselves there. Well, might we see it? Felicity hopefully pressed. As much as I appreciate the tour, darling, I'm not one for extended amounts of walking around. The president nodded, guiding them up a gilded staircase that went parallel to the road, then on a bridge across it. A small badge on his chest sparkled with magic, and a glass double door ahead of him opened automatically in return. He stood to the side, inviting everyone in. It was a lobby, feeling halfway between an office and a hotel, with a well-dressed mayor behind a reception desk and lots of potted plants and a window at one end overlooking the water. She nodded to the president and went back to writing in a ledger. Student and Faculty Housing Administration, Home Office, President Kanmari said with a grin. Hello there, Envelope. How's the, um, situation coming along? We have foreign guests in need of a place to call their own. The secretary, Envelope, looked up from her ledger. Generosity, too, is cleaned and in perfect condition, but we're still waiting on legal about the herring stroke situation. They've inspected it and are sure it's safe, though. Harsh water blinked. Herring stroke situation? Uh, President Kanmari suddenly looked slightly awkward. Oh, well, uh, Brush Herring Stroke, our head art history professor, was arrested for fraud and black market dealings while on vacation a few weeks ago and has been fired from the university. So no one is using his room, but until we find out whether his art collection was legal, 
We're in a bind dealing with it. And it wouldn't be sporting of us to put you in a villa with a stolen art collection, so I was making sure that was still off the table. A villa with a stolen art collection? <laughs> Jam just perked up. Sounds classy. Can I stay there? I promise I won't mess with it. Everyone looked at her, the president and secretary not knowing how to respond. Ah, uh, President Kamari self-consciously brushed a suit. Shouldn't that be your parents' choice? He looked around the group for anyone willing to take ownership of jam jars. Oh, I'm on my own, jam jars primly replied. My mother was useless, and my father left her in secret, so he was a flake. I just take care of myself. The president shot everyone but jam jars a very worried look. It's not pretty in the north, Amber apologized with a feeble grin. We look after her, though, Slipstream insisted, patting a wing on Jam Jars' head. And would like to know if there are better options for where to stay. Someone else's cottage that hasn't been cleaned yet? Her eyes shifted to Harshwater. What if it's full of self-portraits? Uh, Harshwater reddened just a little. I wish I could go back and destroy those. Uh, President Kenmari shuffled. If there's some history, or you need a moment, I can step out. Oh no, it's fine, Amber insisted, Granada looking perplexed behind her. This just isn't the first time we've been offered a criminal's villa that's full of art. Some interesting history there. It's a long story. Uh, the president looked slightly put out. That's why I wasn't offering it. Merely checking on its status, just in case. But I want it, Jim just protested. It sounds classy! No! A slipstream tried to cover Jam Jars' mouth and restrain her from talking. Granada stepped forward and commanded attention. That is perfectly fine. Where else do you have that we could sleep? I believe tensions are high because my friends and I are tired from our journey. We do need a place of our own. The president jumped on this excuse to change the topic. Right. One place we'd be happy to offer you is the Generosity 2 Suite, part of a row of villas west across the road, as close to the water as you can get without falling in. The best property on the island. Each house has claim to two of them, one for the professor who has the house, and one for whomever the students choose. In accordance with their ideals, generosity has long mandated theirs be kept open for those in need. You can officially have it for the night, and I'm more than certain they'd all agree to let you keep it next time they meet. You have quite the reputation, after all. The best property on the island? Amber perked up. Well, that sounds like a good deal. What's the catch? Uh, President Kinmari cleared his throat. It's meant for one or two, not a dozen. A very luxurious one or two, but there's a single bedroom and a single large bed, so it wouldn't be enough to Felicity daintily clear the throat. Darling? Put it in my name for now, and I have a feeling I'll be able to get maximum satisfaction out of the place for everyone involved. Granada gave her a lock. I prefer to sleep on my own. Same. Harshwater did likewise. Felicity pouted. Well, there goes that idea. We'd still love it, of course, Slipstream cut in. But do you have anything else? One bedroom for all of us really wouldn't work out. Jam Jars unsubtly nudged her. The Herring Stroke Room! Uh, President Kinmari did an awkward job of ignoring her. If campus faculty housing is full, one option you'd have is College Town. There are inns and more permanent lodgings there, where many of the university and island support staff live. They won't be as deluxe or fancy as this place, but we'd still pay for everything, and you'd be closer to the stores and restaurants. Location is everything, isn't it? I would appreciate that. Granada nodded thankfully. Same, Harshwater offered. Amber shrugged. If we're trying to get a pile going in the generosity place, I'm done for that. She glanced back at Niala, who had been silent the whole time. What about you, girl? Niala blinked in surprise, looking clearly unaccustomed to being part of large group discussions. Oh, I'd need to think about it, I guess? And what are we doing, Slipstream asked, glancing at Gerardo. I don't have strong feelings, but would rather stick with you. And Gerardo drew a talon across his uniform chest. 
Ah, well, he glanced at the president. If it's not too offensive to your hospitality, I made some good friends over the weekend and have multiple standing invitations to be the guest of honor at various dorms. So I could save you some logistical hassle. President Kenmari laughed and grinned. That's wonderful. I was about to say the dorms were your third option if you felt like bunking with rowdy college kids. Doubt many of them would turn you away. So, does anyone not know what they're doing? For anyone who wants college town, I'm happy to lead a tour. Me! Jamjar has raised an emphatic hoof. If I can't have the art collector's place, can I get my own room in town? The president's demeanor fell again, looking like he really didn't want to deal with this. Can't you stay with whoever's taking care of you? I take care of myself, Jamjar's replied, fluffing her chest. University policy forbids us from making dedicated housing reimbursements in the name of anyone less than 18 years of age, envelope interrupted, coming to the president's rescue. You stay with someone else. And Jamjars put on an ego grin. So, if we had money on the boat and I could pay for it myself? It also forbids us from signing to anyone that young. Envelope shuttered down with an emotionless, loyally tone. You stay with someone else. Uh, Jamjars gritted her teeth and pouted. Will any of you ask for a room and then leave it all to me? Not in a different building, Amber replied. Maybe you can ask Nyala if she'll get a place in town and let you stay with her, but this is a city and we're not letting you live and sleep on your own. Nyala bit her lip. Is that what everyone wants? No! I want my own room! Jamjars fumed and stomped to the back of the group. Come on! Starlight frowned in concern as the conversation up front continued. Are you alright? She whispered to Jamjars. I don't usually see you get upset. Just trying a new tactic. I'm calm and composed, Jamjars whispered back, not sounding particularly calm or composed. Are you sure? Jamjars smirked. That is the kind of thing I'd rather talk about in private. You know, her face darkened. Like having my own room. But whatever. Are you ready to sneak out tonight and find a quiet place to chat? I have some things I need to show you. Things? Starlight blinked. What kind of things? If there are more posters, I have bigger things on my mind. Well, obviously, Jamjars rolled her eyes. And I need a pre-reader for a story I wrote about harsh water and slipstream. I think it's good, but I really need a second opinion on how they break up and get back together in Chapter 3. I also want to visit the stores here and see what kind of mare singers are popular in Equestria, and I know you're the expert, so it's critical I get your opinion on this. Starlight slowly regarded her, but didn't say anything. Jim Jars was smarter than that. There couldn't be a way this was actually important, could there? To college town we go then. President Kenmari strolled past, harsh water and granada on his heels. He paused and raised an eyebrow at everyone else. You're really all trying to squeeze into that little villa? Doms, Gerardo pointed to himself in Slipstream. Niala, Felicity, and Amber glanced between each other. I guess we are? Amber shrugged. And we'll go see our other friends back at the hospital. If anything changes, we'll let you know. The president nodded, heading on his way. Behind them, Envelope cleared a throat. Someone from Generosity will be here soon to show you around. In the meantime, please make yourselves comfortable. Gerardo and Slipstream had left by the time the Generosity representative arrived, leaving only Amber, Felicity, Niala, and the Phillies. She was a mare with very high boots and a lot of lace in her mane, starkly contrasted by a plain brown traveling cloak wrapped around her shoulders. Fortunately, she realized the clash of her styles and at least looked a little self-conscious. Hi, Amber offered, holding out a huff. Hi, the mayor greeted in an overly airy voice that sounded like it was trying hard not to be a whisper and couldn't quite succeed. Sorry about the get-up. I just came from a party. My name is Countess Candy Cloud, and it's an immense pleasure to meet you at last. Countess, darling? Felicity looked up. That's quite the title. It's a story, Candy Cloud replied. You can call me Candy. But for now, I heard you need a place to rest your weary heads. Amber nodded. We heard something about a villa? 
Candy beamed, beckoning them along with a wing from beneath her cloak and revealing herself to be a Pegasus. I would love to show you around. Please, would you care to come with me? End of chapter 906